One of the most important things our brains do is assess risk. This street looks pretty empty. Sure, I've got a red light, but what if I don't see any cars coming? Is it worth the risk to save a few seconds? In this case, probably not. But what about more complex or subtle risks? How does your brain decide if, for example, it's safer to visit your mother by driving 500 miles or by flying? You'd think that you'd look at all the evidence and come to a logical, rational, dispassionate conclusion, kind of like Mr. Spock on Star Trek. But that's not how our brains work. One factor is that we pay extra attention to unusual events, like the four hijacked airplanes on September 11, 2001. That event, which was extremely rare, changed how a lot of people viewed the risk of flying. And over the next year, it made many people decide to drive rather than to fly because they thought it was safer. It wasn't. Researchers at Cornell University looked at highway death rates for the year that followed those infamous hijackings. Their analysis showed that this increase in driving, which people thought would be safer, actually led to more than 2,100 additional deaths in the United States. So how do scientists calculate risk? It's not as easy as you might think. Take the risk of flying, for example. Most of the calculations involve the risk of death for each mile that a passenger is on a plane. That makes sense for cars, because the risk is pretty much the same for every mile of the trip. But for airplanes, it's different. About 95% of aviation accidents take place within a few minutes of takeoff or landing. That means the length of the trip doesn't matter. The critical factor is the number of stops along the way. I'm Dr. Cheryl Olson.